The great Francisco Targa student, Miguel Ubet, passed away on the 22nd of February, 1938. And about a year later, Ricardo Munoz had contacted his disciple, Maria Luisa Nito, and said we should do a radio program. And she said, sure, on the anniversary of the passing of his death in 1939. So I'd like to read from volume two of my annotations for the history of the classical guitar in Argentina, 1822 to 2000, about what went on. And so I'm going to quote from the book on page 1426 through 1427. In Ricardo Munoz's biography folder of items in his archive, the last item is titled and numbered 266, Incidencia, Incident, Anito Munoz. In early 1939, a most extraordinary event took place that has remained unknown to this day. Ricardo Munoz attempted to arrange a homage for Miguel Ubet, who passed away on February 22, 1938. Miguel had been a friend of Ricardo's since 1918. Ricardo Munoz saw Miguel Ubet play in August of 1910. On January 13, 1939, Ricardo Munoz had written a letter suggesting to the president of the Centre Catala Institution, where Miguel and uh, Maria Luisa Nito had performed in 1929, uh, that a lecture about the life and work of the Catalan maestro with illuminated photos and the artist's drawings be offered on the first anniversary of Yubet's death, and that Maria Luisa Nito should be the guitarist to give the musical presentation. Both Miguel Yubet and Maria Luisa Nito had performed in the Centre Catala in 1929. There are the images, and I translated the Catalan text, about 600 words. It's in the book. Munoz wanted the Spanish authorities and compatriots of Yubet to be present at this event. The secretary of the Centre Catala institution responded to Munoz in three days, saying that taking into account how Miguel Yubet represents the history of Catalan music, how much he had been involved with the Centre Catala, was to uh, certainly warrant the homage. Though the Spanish authorities weren't necessary, as there were plenty of Catalans and a nucleus of musicians living in Buenos Aires who could attend. In order to hold the image, uh, excuse me, in order to hold the evening of the homage, there would be the consequence of canceling one night of the carnival dances that were customarily held at that time every year. Munoz was asked, to contact Pedro uh, Bosch, the maestro, uh, who would include a large chorale group for the festor festivities. On the 18th of January, Ricardo responded to the Century Catala Board of Directors that he was happy to be able to offer the participation of himself and Ms. Maria Luisa Nito in the homage to Yvette. He added that he had been in touch with Maestro Bosch, who would organize the large chorale's involvement in the evening. This was beginning to be a big event. On March 6, 1939, Munoz wrote that in respect to the event to be held on March 11th, he needed to explain the following. At 10 o'clock on Saturday, February 25th, at the end of Maria Luisa's radio performance on LR2, Radio de Estado. He had spoken with her and she was in agreement with all that had been organized and she requested 30 invitations for her family and friends and a lower box seat at the theater. On February 27, 35 hours after that conversation, her brother Carlos E. Anito called Ricardo Munoz on the telephone to request an interview at four o'clock in the afternoon in Carlos's office in the Palacio del Cadeos de la Nación Comisión uh, of the Interior Section. That would be a post office. Uh, Munoz arrived to see a pale and trembling man who communicated to 
Ricardo that his sister, for reasons of her absolutely private disposition, had definitely resolved to not perform at the homage and that she was going to completely ret retire from the artistic life, seeing that all he had done on behalf of the artist had no satisfactory result and that Maria Luisa had left with her mother to travel to the town of Montes. Ricardo informed Carlos Ianito that Carlos needed to contact the Centre Catala immediately. The following day, Tuesday, February 28th at 12 o'clock noon, Munoz spoke with Maestro Pedro Bosch to inform him what had happened and that he had been absolutely ignored that Carlos E. Anito had not gone to the Century Catala to alert the board of directors. The same day at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Munoz met with Bosch at the Century Catala and they decided to try to arrange another appointment with Mr. Anito to solicit him to ask his sister to reconsider her attitude towards the completion of her word as to performing at the homage. Carlos apologized for failing to show up, also promised without fail to arrive at the Century Catala sometime after 10 o'clock that evening. Munoz communicated to Maestro Bosch that, however, after waiting for two hours, Mr. Anito had still failed to arrive. He went home at midnight. The following day on the 1st of March, Munoz telephoned the Anito home several times and no one answered. Ricardo resolved to look for Mr. Anito in his office. When Munoz arrived, the secretary told him it's prohibited to speak to employees while they are working. And though Ricardo insisted, however, it was impossible to see Mr. Anito. At 10 o'clock that evening, Ricardo was able to speak with Mr. Anito and harshly admonished him for his informal attitude of promising to speak to the institution, then failing to deal with the affair. The following day, Munoz spoke with Mr. Bosch to learn of the failure of Mr. Carlos Anito to appear once again, as well as a telephone call received from Maria Luisa's mother that communicated her daughter's resolution. With all the diligence that both Maestro Bosch and Professor Munoz had practiced to gain an interview with Ms. Anito to resolve satisfactorily this disgraceful act and to learn the true causes of an uh, attitude so sudden as unheard of. They have been absolutely wretched as many of the Anito family appear to lack the scope to take stock that they ignore, that they are fleeing their moral responsibility as believed that they are doing. Their professional ethic that Miguel Yobet instilled in Maria Luisa was not reciprocated post-mortem. Ricardo Munoz continues to explain that without the involvement of Maria Luisa Nito, he cannot do the lecture as it's already been written around the pieces she was preparing to play and the other reason being that only she possesses in general the ability to bring the unpublished works of Miguel Yobet to the concert audience. Munoz says that the board of directors is authorized to use his letter as a testament of any public resolution, social as well as judicial. On March 10, 1939, the secretary of the Century Catala Institution replied to Ricardo Munoz saying that the board of directors is convinced that Ricardo Munoz did all that was humanly possible to attempt to make Maria Luisa Nito keep her word, which had become a false promise. Without her even so much as offering a different date on which to reschedule the event, this event had been spontaneously offered to the benefactors of the Centre Catala Institution, never thinking of the unraveling that would befall that which was so painstakingly organized. The secretary continues to say that perhaps never before in the artistic history of Buenos Aires had any disgraceful situation such as this occurred. The board of directors had removed any culpability of the lack of moral responsibility from the shoulders of Ricardo Munoz. 
below is the program that should have taken place on March 11, 1939, in memory of the great Catalan maestro Miguel Ubet, who passed away on February 22, 1938. We have the illuminated projections, a profile of Maria Luisa Anito's head, a sketch by Miguel Ubet, that's also included in the book. I believe that sketch was drawn in Rosario de Santa Fe. Miguel Yobet, sketched by Casas, a well-known uh, painter. Uh, Miguel Yobet, oil painting by Lopez Mezquita. I have that also included in the book. Miguel Yobet, 1910, a photo, allegory of the Cancion Catalana Monument. Miguel Yobet, sculpture by Cardona, a well-known sculpture artist in Spain. Last portrait of Miguel Yobet. Program completion with the list of song titles on the next page. Here's the uh, dibujo, the sketch by Ramon Casas. Here's the Lopez Mezquita, very famous color painting. Musical program was to have Romanza, Preludio, Copla de la Jota, unpublished, impromptu, Scherzo Waltz, harmonizations, Lo Fil de Rey, El Mestre. I played that for my teacher the day I went and started taking lessons in 1979 with Byron Pang. Canso del Yadre, unpublished, Preludio, unpublished, Bach, Yobet. Mazurka to Tchaikovsky, Yobet, Cadiz by Albanese, transcription by Yobet, Triste, Motivo Popular Argentino by Yobet, unpublished. The Casas sketch says the Catalan artist Don Ramon Casas did this sketch of Miguel Yobet in 1899. This appeared in the magazine La, Qu La Guitarra. Number two, December 23, from which it was taken. I also want to mention that Maria Luisa Anito's ex targa collection, 1864, Antonio de Torres guitar, was put up for auction just 100 days later on June 22, 1939. The program that was handed out to bidders in the auction is included in my book, uh, having all this uh, archival data that came from uh, vital sources uh, really made a difference from having somewhat of a book to a very detailed book. 2,630 pages, 77 page index done by Jan de Chloe of Belgium. And what happened at the um, auction for the Targa uh, owned 1864 Antonio de Torres guitar is um, her students ended up buying the guitar and gave it back to her. And it went into her, the hands of a collector decades later. Thank you.